Hey, Rainbow here. Welcome to my channel and how are you? Thanks for coming back or for the first time. Thanks for being here. I'm going to share some different perspectives on things, but for the most part today is about the Multistrada V4S versus the Multistrada Pikes Peak that has just been announced last week. However, who knows when they'll be delivered? Maybe January, February, sometime next year. That's all we know at this point. So here's what I want to talk about. The difference between the two, would you upgrade or would you finally get this bike for the first time? Maybe you passed on the Multistrada V4S for some reason and now you're thinking, hey, I'll go for the Pikes Peak version, okay? If you want an adventure bike, then you're not going to want the Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak is definitely more of the sport touring where the uh, Multistrada V4S is definitely more of the, let's call it, adventure touring. It's up there with the BMW GS. I know the BMW guys are pretty, that's sacred ground. I'm not going to tread on it. They're fantastic bikes, but we're not here about BMW. We're here about Ducati. So what's the difference between these two? Let's run the numbers between the two, and we're going to look at what's the same what's different and what one has that the other one doesn't. And I think that's going to be important. So let's roll the in. Yeah, I don't have an intro. We don't. Why do I need to put something up that looks like I have this major production and it's just me sitting in my back room behind my garage? Why? <laughs> anyway, so they both have the Gran Turismo 1158 CC engine. They both put out 150 horsepower on paper at 10,500 RPM. They're both exactly the same as far as that is concerned. Same torque, 92 foot-pounds of torque, and that's at about 8,750 RPM, okay? They both have the aluminum frame. They're basically the same basic bike with the same basic controls and same riding position. Now, of course, we're gonna get to some of the major differences, okay? Um, for example, they both have the same power modes with ABS cornering, Ducati traction control, Ducati wheelie control, daytime running lights, adaptive cruise control. It's on both bikes, okay? Blind spot monitoring on both bikes. Now, this is the V4S I'm talking about. Vehicle hold, which comes in handy when you're on a hill. I've used it a few times. Cornering lights and a quick shifter, quick shift up and down. Now, they're pretty much about exactly the same as far as that's concerned. Now, the V4S is about 480 pounds uh, dry, and you're looking at 472 pounds dry for the Multistrada Pikes Peak. So they saved somewhere about nine pounds. Okay, great. You can, after Thanksgiving, you can put that nine pounds back on your body. This is where we start to make things a little bit different. We're finally going from a 19-inch front wheel for the V4S, because you need that 19-inch to have a good solid adventure bike, down to 17. So now instead of having a 19 front and a 17 rear on a Multistrada V4S, the Pikes Peak is two 17s. I kind of like that, although the 19-inch comes in handy when you want to skip around traffic and go up and over curbs. Did I say that? No. Anyway, um, so... The rear tire is also different, okay? We're going from a four and a half inch, 17 inch wheel to basically a six inch wheel. So we're going from about a 170-60 R17 to a 190-55 ZR, well, ZR17 to ZR17. That's gonna be the same. Now, they are using different types of uh, tires where we have the Scorpion Trail 2s and instead we're gonna have the Diablo Rosos on the Pikes Peak, more performance oriented for uh, sporty, sportiness, okay? Now, another place we're gonna see some differences and we're gonna to get to the, one of the biggest soon. I know you're going, why didn't you mention it yet? Well, I didn't get there. Four riding modes. Currently, V4S, we have Enduro, Urban, Touring, and Sport. Those are the four modes. When you go to the sport touring, we're obviously going to get rid of the enduro mode. So instead, you're going to start off with urban, touring, sport, and then race mode. From what I understand, the race mode is supposed to raise up the bike a little bit 
to add more lean angle. Now, I do know for a fact, because I've been told by Ducati, and not just a dealer, but Ducati, that the lean angle for the V4S is, now when I say V4S, again, we're talking multi-strata V4S, is 52 degrees, which is pretty significant, and I think it's gonna be really difficult for anyone on the street to ever achieve that. I've been into the 30s, I haven't had anything any more than that, okay? Um, so they're gonna increase the lean angle, what that's gonna increase it to, and what it actually is, I don't know, because Ducati doesn't have any specs on the lean angle, or what the change is in lean angle when you go into race mode, okay? Now, the big biggie here. In addition to the change in tire of the front tire from 19 to 17, the Pike's Peak is going from a two-sided swing arm to a single-sided swing arm. Now, my guess is they needed a little extra stability for off-road on, you know, and, and more strength on a two-sided swing arm for the adventure touring versus what I'm going to put this as a sport touring bike, and that's even though it's not set up like a super sport, it's, but it's, it's kind of an anomaly, to be quite honest with you. So the bottom line is they're going to a single-sided swing arm as far as that's concerned. Now, the wheelbase, surprisingly, is going to be a little bit longer. We're going from 61.7 inches up to 62.8. We're going to add about 1.1 inches of wheelbase to this bike, which actually kind of surprised me. The rake is going from a 24 and a half degree to 25 and three quarter degree, and the trail is going from four inch to 4.7 inch on the Pikes Peak version. Now, the ground clearance, which is important for adventure riding, is 8.6 inches on the V4S. The Multistrada Pikes Peak did not give those specifications, so I have no clue what it is on there. Fuel is going to be the same, and the fuel for this is going to be about 5.8 gallons each. I have done plenty of videos on the uh, fuel consumption of my Multistrada V4S, and you can look at those, search for them. You'll find lots of information about it. I still, to this day, continue to um, record every single time that I get gas. All right, let's continue. Okay, so we have some other major changes in this bike, all right? The front forks on the Multistrada V4S, and I'm just going to refer to it as the V4S, I'm not going to have to say Multistrada all the time, um, has 50 millimeter front forks versus the 48 millimeter Olin's front forks, okay? Um, both the front forks and the monoshock that come from Ducati on the V4S, both are electronically adjustable via the Ducati Skyhook suspension system, okay, electronics that they have for that. The Olin's uses the Olin's electronic rebound and dampening system. So they have that on the monoshock and they have that on the forks, okay? Um, the total travel on the front and rear of the V4S is 6.7 inches in the front and 7.1 inches of rear travel. That makes sense. And on the new Pikes Peak, it's 6.7 and 6.7 .7 inches. It's the same front and back. That again makes sense. Now, some more differences here. The starting price for your V4S travel and radar is $25,795. That's US dollars. And I'll tell you what's included with that $25,795. Your matching panniers, center stand, heated grips, heated seat, heated passenger seat, hand guards, and your regular windscreen. Okay? Now, drum roll please. Most of you already know this. The Pikes Peak version starts at $28,995. That's an increase of $3,200, which is a lot to do with the Olins, I'm assuming. And then everything else that I had mentioned, the panniers, the center stand, the heated grips, heated seat, passenger seat, 
the hand guards, the regular windscreen, all of that stuff, it's extra. And when you total up all of those items, all right, the panniers themselves are 950 bucks. Plus, if you want to have the matching color, it's another 175. That's 1,125 dollars. Center stand's going to set you back 300 bucks if you want it. Now, if you have track days, of course, you're going to take all this stuff off, or at least the panniers and the center stand. Um, but the center stand's 300 bucks. The heated grips are going to set you back 373 dollars and change. That's a weird number. The heated seat is going to be 300. The heated passenger seat is going to be another 190. You could probably skip without that. The hand guards, which it doesn't come with, which I kind of really like, it helps you with a little bit of a wind protection. Um, that's another 180 bucks. And the regular windscreen versus the the shorter one that comes with the Pikes Peak version is another 180 bucks. If you total all of that together, you come to 2,648 dollars for all of that, 2,648 bucks to add all of those items. Or if you want, and this I think is a mistake by Ducati, I think they have to correct this or it's not a mistake, and I think it's a mistake. They have what's called, for the Pikes Peak, you can purchase a Ducati V4 touring package. And this touring package is $2,750, which is more than all of those other items combined. And, but it only includes the side panniers. We don't even know if that includes having the right color, uh, you know, covers. The center stand and heated grips. It says nothing about hand guards. It says nothing about heated seat, nothing about passenger heated seat. Um, and it doesn't give you the regular windscreen. That's not what it says on their website. I'm not saying that their website is correct, but their website should be correct, all right? So if you just get, by the way, for that $2,750 package, if you just get those things separately, it only comes to like just under 1,800 bucks. So where are the other 900s go coming from or going to? I don't know. My suspicion is, is that this is a mistake on the Ducati website and they just don't list everything that comes in that package, all right? So, you know. Anyway, the bottom line here is that if you want the V4S, but the Pikes Peak version of it, your cost is gonna go up 5,800, almost six grand, all right? 5,848 bucks. And that's gonna take you up to 31,643 bucks sticker. And everybody seems to be at sticker, right? which is basically a 23% increase on an already $25,000, $26,000 motorcycle. So that's pretty significant. And that is the price breakdown, and that's where we stand right now. So the question is, and you should all be asking yourself, or maybe you've already made up your mind, or maybe you're not even a Ducati guy, is it worth it? Will I be swapping over to the Pikes Peak? I actually don't know. At first, I thought I was going to be pretty committed to it, but I'm concerned about the pricing. I'm concerned about what I'm losing, because uh, if you're going to call it a sport touring and it doesn't automatically come with the paneers and I got to spend $1,100 for paneers, um, that's a problem. I, I, I don't care for that. Um, it doesn't come with heated grips. Got to do that separately. It doesn't come with a lot of things. The heated seat I can probably deal without. The heated grips I'm definitely going to need when I go up north and travel. Living in Florida, unless I take this bike to the track, I really have nowhere to enjoy it. And that's the thing about Florida sales with stuff like these Multistradas. Um, Adventure-wise, okay, you can find some woods to go out, you change your tires and stuff. But as far as everyday riding, canyons, we don't have canyons, we don't have anything, any anywhere near that. I have a few S curves that have a change of elevation, which are really fun, but unfortunately they're in 35 mile an hour zones on the coast that are very heavily patrolled in very ritzy sections of uh, our area. So it's very difficult to even take advantage. And most of the time there's so much traffic with people sightseeing that you can't go through at a decent speed anyway. So I'm on the fence right now. I really like the bike. I wouldn't mind touring with that bike. 
Um, it's definitely not a daily commuter type bike. The race mode is awesome, but who is going to want to take a $31,000 or $30,000 motorcycle to a track day that's not a sport bike, but it's a kind of like a sport, it's like a half a sport bike. Uh, anyway, it has a regular riding position and you have to really ask yourself, is it worth it? Because could I maybe just buy something used that actually is a, like a super sport or a good, a much sportier bike for a lot less money and have a lot less liability and worry about low siding something on a track versus taking out a really nice bike like this. Anyway, let's discuss this in the comments below. Like and subscribe. I always ask at the end. Apparently, I'm supposed to ask in the beginning. I mean, honestly, I can care less. But I do like everyone being here. <laughs> this is not how I make uh, earn a living at all. Trust me. Um, anyway, it's been a pleasure. This is Rainbow. Hope you enjoy this. Take care and have a good day.